Welcome to Flash from Scratch, Tutorial 33, Picture Presentation. I'm starting a new FLA. I have the CS5 program open. I'm keeping the default, which has the Action Script 3. OK. And I'm going to start by importing four pictures. So under File, Import, Import to the Library. And now it's got to take some time to do this, to set it up. And what this is doing, this is taking me to my browser. And I want four pictures, which I have right here. And I'm just going to hold my shift, click the first one, hold my shift down. So I'm taking all those four, open. And if I look on my library, there they are. There's pitch one, pitch two, pitch three, pitch four and I'm going to go to frame 2 insert a keyframe frame 3 insert a keyframe and frame 4 insert a keyframe and I'm going to call this layer pictures PIC select frame 1 bring in picture 1 we'll do it this way then number 2 Bring in picture number two, frame three, picture three, frame four, picture four. And now they're pretty pretty pictures, but while this one is selected, I can see that blue line that's still around it. I'm just going to open my alignment panel right here. If you don't have it here, go under window, alignment and it will open and click make sure this is a check align to stage this one aligns it horizontally to the center and vertically to the center go to this next frame back one frame make sure there's a little blue haze around it if not use your selection tool the alignment panel again center it to the stage going back to this one centering it to the stage and this one centering it to the stage now they're all different sizes but you could make them the same size and you could put a frame around it it's up to you let's lock this layer insert a new layer call it buttons b-u-t-t-o-n-s select frame one and pick up the we'll go with the rectangle tool and I'm going to keep the stroke of black and a green for my fill and I'm going to make a longish rectangle like that Oop. rectangle tool select frame one there we go a longish rectangle like that go up pick up my selection tool move in on it until you see that arch there pull it until you get like a like a point go back to the tail end get that arch and I made sort of like an arrow copy that right click click on it copy click on the stage somewhere paste in place now while it's this is selected go up to modify transform and down here flip horizontally so now it's facing the other way and using my arrow keys I'm going to move it over that way and I'm going to take that one and move it back a little bit so there they they sit I'm just going to go through my frames to make sure my there. I got to move them down. Move my both down with my arrow keys. Now make sure I'm not hitting any of my pictures. There we go. Select this button here that's pointing that way. Go up to modify, convert it to a symbol. Make sure a button is selected, and call it F W D as in forward underscore DTN copy that 
right click copy close it open the properties panel and up here where it says instance paste that instance name we'll need that when we write the code for this button come down here highlight this one what well, modify convert to a symbol button this is previous p r e v underscore b t n again copy this make sure button is selected okay open the actions panel and paste in that for the instance name now if we try test this now it would just go through those pictures really quick it's just gonna go through a pic zoom 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 so we want some control so the first thing we want is some action script and we want it to be stopped so it's the first thing block all the layers insert a layer Remember AS, keep the actions on one layer. Select frame one, open the actions panel, and we want to stop. STOP, open, close, semicolon. That would stop it. And now the first thing we want to be able to do is start it up again. And we want to be able to press one of these, this, this button here that's pointing ahead, the forward button, and make it advance. So type, 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 type this code in. Capital FWD underscore BTN. That's that previous, that's that first button we made, the one pointing to the right. Period. Add event listener. This is all one word. Small A, capital E, capital L. That will turn blue. Open bracket, mouse event, capital M, capital E. That will turn blue eventually. Period, capital C, capital L, capital I, capital C, capital K. So that's blue, and that is blue, and maybe even a period. It's hard for me to tell. Then I have a comma, uh, comma after the click, and I'm calling this next frame, capital N, capital F. So you can copy that right now. Right click, copy it. Then I have a close bracket and a semicolon. That's calling the click. That's the event listener. That's listening for the button to be pushed. When the button is pushed, we're going to jump into this function called next frame. So function, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N, that turns purple. Paste in this word next frame. Open bracket, event, small E-V-E-N-T, colon. Now you can copy this most event and paste it in here. Close bracket colon void avoids the communications between the program and the computer there's an open curly bracket and as soon as you start typing in here this I think this closed one will come in automatically for you so open curly bracket next frame open close bracket semicolon the N is small the F is capital it will turn blue if you spell it right and there's that one final close curly bracket so if we test at this, this would allow us to move forward. Forward, 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 forward. Okay? Can't go back yet, so that's what we'll do next. Put your cursor here and copy that up to the stop, not the stop. Right click, copy it. I'm using my enter keys to space myself down, pasting it. And now I'm talking about the prev button, button we called P R E V underscore B T M. Everything here stays the same, except it's not next frame. It's going to be the previous frame. P R E V. And here, previous frame P R E V. And naturally P R E now see if you got that far and it didn't turn blue you know it's wrong but as soon as I put the V in I know it's spelt right so now we're going to go back to the previous frame let's test that out that takes me back forward this takes me back forward back back now we can't go back any further than that we can't go any more forward than that so we have to do something else so close that and 
to keep track let's go back to the main timeline let's lock that action script layer so we don't stick something on there inadvertently click on the buttons layer insert a layer click on this first frame and this is just something to keep track use your text tool it's going to be a green text but that's alright and put here one as in frame one go back up to this this new layer second frame right click insert keyframe change this one to a two go up to the third one insert a keyframe change it to a three this is not going to stay here this is just for us to keep track and insert a keyframe and turn this to a four so we'll know what frame we're on because we otherwise we have to recognize the pictures lock that layer go back to the action script and open the actions panel now let's deal with the when we go forward and right here after this first curly bracket I want you to put in this code type 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 it's an if statement and an if is like a condition so if it will turn the same color as function open bracket this is the condition it's testing for and write this period current frame this is a small letter there's a period there's a small c capital F and that will turn blue if it's spelt right and I have two equal signs equal equal means I'm testing to see that it is equal to this number if I just had one equal sign that means change it to that number and that wouldn't be a condition that would be a statement but this when you see two equal sign that's a question saying is it equal equal to four and four we have a four here because that would be my last frame number four close bracketing here's the open curly bracket for this if statement and if this is true then we'd be on by frame four we'd want to loop around and go back to frame one go to and stop small g small t capital a capital s that turns blue open bracket one close bracket semicolon so here we're going to go when we get to frame four and if we press this next button again it's going to loop around and go back to and stop on frame one there's the close curly bracket for this if statement if this is not true else that's what it means if this is not true or or would be something better but or is a boolean function so they are using the word else else there's an open bracket there's your original next frame that you have with its open and closed bracket and a semicolon. And the last thing you need to add here now is another op closed curly bracket. So let's look at it and see where the brackets are. There's an open curly bracket, an open curly bracket, a closed curly bracket, an open curly bracket, a closed and a closed. So let's just see if this works. And if you didn't have the right number of curly brackets, it would tell you with an error. And there's no errors. So now I'm just going forward. There's frame two, three, four, and back to frame one. We can go down, but we can only go down to frame one. So we have to do something similar for the down part. So let's scroll down. We're going to do basically the same thing. Right here is that curly bracket. And here I want you to type, 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 type. You're going to type in this if again, if. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could copy this and bring it down. But it's good practice to type these in. Even if you're slow like I am, it's still good practice. So, if, if, it turns purple. Open bracket. This, period, current frame. That's the same as up top. Equals, equals one. Close bracket. That means we would be going with the previous button and gotten down to one. And we'd want to loop around and go back to four. Um, I should have explained this word somewhat to you. This, this means what I'm on now or what I'm talking about. So in this case, this means this. It means this frame. It means this. Where you're at right now. If if this current frame is equal to one, equal equals. Close bracket. There's the open bracket for this if statement. Now we want to go to and stop. 
open bracket, four, close bracket, semicolon. That'll send us back to number four. If you look up top, you see how to spell it. There's the close bracket for this if statement. Then we got this else again. Else is purple. There's the open curly bracket for the pre-frame. And finally, we need to have one more close curly bracket. So if we look at this, open bracket, open bracket, close bracket, open, close, close. And if you check, hit this, let's leave one of them out for a minute. Let's leave one of them out and hit this. It'll tell us. It says there's an error. It's on line, it's that frame one we're on, line 29. It's expecting the right brace on line 29. So if we open that actions panel, down here, it's expecting a right brace. On, it says on frame 29, but anywhere, it, whether I put it here or here, it's the same thing. So that, that errors panel is great. And if you click this, it kind of straightens it out. One of the things, it might indent this for you. There, see, it sort of straightens it out. Action Script 2 with, with Professional 8 does a better job of, of, of formatting than, than, than this CS5 does, in my, in my opinion. Let's test this out, and we should be good to go. We can go up. Watch the numbers. We can go down. If we go up past 4, it continues. If we go down past one, it continues. And if you add pictures, you can they can have any name you want. You just have to go back to frame one, add frames. That's all you gotta do, you know how to do that. And the only other thing you gotta do is in the actions panel, the only thing you gotta change is this four. You would have to change to a five or or whatever. And down here you would have to change this one to the same amount. Now, the last thing that we want to be concerned or not about is these numbers. Do you want those numbers showing? Um, if you don't want the numbers at all, you can right click and delete the layer completely and you wouldn't see them. But it's nice to have them should you add frames onto them and, and, and add these numbers on to check it out. So there's a way of leaving this layer without having it being seen. And that is by, if I double click on this layer, this, this window will open. And it's a normal layer. But if you click this one called mask, just click that. And then say OK. And you'll see this little square with the blue grid in here. That made this layer a mask. And see, you can't see it. And if you want to come back and modify it and use it and test it out, double click on this layer and make it a normal layer again. Okay, so let's give this a name while we're, since we're going to keep it, and let's just call it number, M-U-M-B-E-R. I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and I hope you use what you learned.